In this video, we are going to be integrating HubSpot with Webflow so that when someone fills out a form on your website, they're automatically added as a contact to your HubSpot CRM. And the best part about this is we aren't using any third-party integrations or third-party apps or even any extensive custom code solutions. All we are using is HubSpot and Webflow. So without any further ado, let's hop right into it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is go to HubSpot and we are going to create what is called a private app. So to do that, go to your HubSpot settings. From here, under integrations, we need to go to private apps. From here, we are going to create a private app. You can name this anything you want. I'm just going to call this Webflow. Uh, you can give it a logo if you want, a description, but we're not going to do any of those right now. Next thing, we need to go under scopes. And from here, we want to open up CRM and then find the item that says crm.objects.contacts. And we are going to select read and write for both of these. And then once that is done, simply create app. And this is basically going to give you a warning saying that you have a token that you're gonna be given and basically don't share it with anybody. So we're gonna click on continue creating. And now our app has been successfully created so we can close this out and we can now navigate over to Webflow to continue the setup. So first off, you're gonna to want to have a form, obviously. Now I just have a very basic form. There isn't nothing special about this form. There isn't no custom code or integrations going on here. This is just a native Webflow form with a first name field, a last name field, and an email field. But you can have pretty much whatever fields you wish as long as they match the HubSpot properties that we are going to go over here in a little bit. But with your form created, we now have to create a logic flow. So in the uh, left-hand side, click on logic, and then click on flows, and we are going to add a new flow. From here, we are just going to add this flow name and we're going to call it HubSpot uh, integration. And then you can give it a description if you like. But next thing, we are going to click on select a trigger. We are going to trigger based on a form submission. And then over here, we are going to select the form that we want to trigger this flow on. So under form, we are going to select our form. This website that we're working in just has one form. If you have a lot of forms, it will show all, they'll all show up here, but simply select the form you want to, you want to use. And then we're just going to name this trigger on form submission. You can name these, whatever you like. Uh, and then we're going to click on the plus icon, and then we are going to select make HTTP request. And then we were just going to name this post to HubSpot. From here, for the authentication, we are going to select API token, and then under add to, we are going to select header. From here, for the header, we are going to paste in or write in authorization. So authorization, and then under credential, we are going to click add a new credential. We are going to call this HubSpot token. And if we go back to our private app that we just created, if you go under auth, you will see this access token that you were given. We want to click show token so that we can now copy this token. And then we are going to go back to Webflow. Down here in the token field, we are going to write bearer space, and then we are going to simply paste that token that we just copied from HubSpot. With that out of the way, we can click on create. And then under request method, we are going to set that to post. And then for the URL, we have to grab the HubSpot API URL. So I'm going to include a link to this in the description below, but basically on this developer doc, un, <laughs> under this development documentation, we're going to click on endpoints. And then you're gonna see, we have kind of like this little code snippet right here, and we are going to copy this URL right here all the way up to the contacts. So we're gonna copy that. And then we are just gonna paste that in the URL field right there. And then for headers, we need to add a new header. And again, we have to go back to this developer, developer documentation and under header right here, 
we're going to copy content type. We're going to go back to Webflow. We're going to paste content type as the name. And then we're going to go back to HubSpot and we're going to copy application JSON. And then we are going to paste that under value. So you can click out of that now. Next thing we have to go back to the developer documentation and then go back to overview and we're going to scroll down and these are the properties that we are going to add. Now my form, it only has an email field, a first name and a last name field. So we don't need the remainder of these properties, but if your form has, let's say a form field, I mean a phone field or a company field, you can keep uh, any of these properties you want. But for now, I'm going to copy all of these and then I'm just going to delete the ones that I don't want. But with these copied, we want to select this body input field and we simply want to paste these properties. From here, I'm simply going to remove the ones I don't want. There we go. And it's very important that the last property does not have a comma after it. So you can see all of these properties, they have a comma after it to kind of show that that is one property. It's very important that the last property has the comment removed or else you will get an error once we go to test this. Now from here, if we were to run a test, you would see that this example data would actually show up in your HubSpot CRM because this should be working perfectly, but we don't want that to happen. So we're just going to quickly remove this info. So you want to remove the name and the emails from these quotes, but you want to leave the quotes there because now we are going to dynamically add our fields from the forms that we have on our website. So just to show you what I mean for email, we want to put our cursor. We want to select within the two quotes, and then we want to click on this little purple icon and we want to insert a variable from our form. So under form fields, we want to insert the variable email. And you can see if it puts it in a weird spot, you might have to try it a few times because it should put it where your cursor is. Let's try this again. Okay, so Webflow is having a little bit of a technical difficulty. It wasn't putting these purple things where they should go. But basically within each quote, you want to insert a variable of the property that you're using. So I have email, first name, and last name. So I wanted to between each of those quotes, insert the variable email, first name, and last name. So once that's done, you should see that now some of your properties may have this yellow wrench icon. This is because we need to click on the settings for each of these variables and we need to add what is called a fallback. This is just in case that variable is left empty. Say the person doesn't fill out that field and they submit the form that something still needs to be passed through. So you can actually put anything you want here to describe this field, but I'm just going to write null. It kind of, it just means like empty or blank. So we're going to do that for the next one. And you can see now this blue button run test to complete setup is now available since we fixed those two issues. So now what we're going to do is we are going to click on the run test to complete setup. So with that open, it should show you this pop up and it is going to have you enter a value for each of the properties that we have. So for me, it's just three. So for the last name, we're going to click on sum. We're going to enter uh, Groff. And then for the first name, we are going to do Michael. And then for the email, I am enter an email here. There we go. And then we need to click on run test. Give it a few seconds while it processes the request and it should return uh, successful. Uh, so you see here, test request has been successful. You're going to see a whole bunch of jargon right here. But if we open up properties, we should see that um, some of our properties have been passed through. So the email has the email we entered. The first name has the first name we entered and the last name has the last name we entered. So now what we're going to click on is apply data. And this information should actually show up in HubSpot. So if you go to your contacts, 
and then I'm just going to unselect contact owners. And you can see right here, this top one, Michael Groff, Michael at FitterMedia.agency. And it was just processed today at the time of recording this video. So this is now working perfectly. So what we need to now do is if you published your website before, you should now be able to click on this publish button. This is a test project we have set up for this tutorial. So I need to quickly publish the site first for the first time. Now that that is done, we can go back to our flow, select our flow, and then we can click on publish stage for publish. And now we can go back and publish our site. So with that now published, let us go to our live site. And now we can test out our form live on the site. So for the first name, we are just going to do Mike this time. And then for the last name, we're going to do Groff. And then for the email, we're just going to do fittermedia at gmail.com. And we are going to click on submit. Thank you. Your submission has been received. This is pretty uh, standard for a default Webflow form. But now if we go back to contacts, let's refresh our page in Webflow. We're going to unselect contact owner and give it a few seconds. We may have to refresh it again. And there we go. I had to refresh it one more time and you can see Mike Groff, fittermedia at gmail.com. And this is now working perfectly. So that is how you integrate Webflow with HubSpot. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below and we'll try our best to get back with you. Also, if you are looking for more Webflow support, we offer unlimited Webflow design and development at a flat monthly rate. If you're interested in that, there'll be a special offer just for you in the description below.